She really put herself on the line, you know, and I, I so appreciate that because she had so many known actors who, who were stepping up and wanted to do it. And she just said, no, I want Christian, even though all the financiers were saying, we're going to give you no money. While many actors command hefty paychecks for their iconic roles, there have been instances where actors were paid relatively small amounts for roles that later became iconic or highly successful. Here are top 10 actors who were paid relatively small for their iconic roles. Number 10. Sylvester Stallone Sylvester Stallone's salary for his iconic role in the 1976 film Rocky was relatively low. At the time when Stallone was cast in Rocky, he was still quite unknown in Hollywood and struggling financially. He initially got offered a small salary of only $20,000 to write the script for Rocky and star in the film. Rocky, you went the distance, you went the 15 rounds, how do you feel? What do you think about when the 15th round when you're coming out? However, Rocky became a massive success, earning critical acclaim and becoming a cultural phenomenon, which led to a highly successful franchise. Stallone's career took off, with him later receiving substantial paychecks for his work in the subsequent Rocky and Rambo films. I don't care about the money. I wanted to leave it to my children. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I wrote it. I, th I thought, when I'm long gone, this is you. Right. This is what this I made for you. This is part of my legacy. That's Number 9. Dustin Hoffman Dustin Hoffman received a relatively low salary for his breakthrough role in the 1967 classic film The Graduate. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> for his work in the film, he earned a salary of approximately $17,000. While this may seem low by today's standards, it's important to note that Hoffman's performance in The Graduate catapulted him to stardom, and he received critical acclaim for his portrayal of the character. The next thing I heard was my agent says to me, you have to sign a contract. So it's an option contract. If they don't pick you, the contract is void. If they do pick you, you owe them six pictures at a certain amount of money, which escalates. Number eight, Sean Connery. Sean Connery's salary for his iconic role as James Bond in the 1962 film Dr. No was rather low by today's standards. He was paid $16,000 for his portrayal of the suave British secret agent. Any questions, 007? No, sir. All right, then. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. However, Dr. No proved to be a massive success, and Sean Connery's portrayal of James Bond catapulted him to international stardom. As a result of the film's success and the subsequent popularity of the Bond franchise, Connery's salary for the later Bond films increased significantly and he became synonymous with the role. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Number seven, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt received a relatively low salary for his role in the 1991 film Thelma and Louise. At the time, he was still an up and coming actor and not yet the list star he would later become. Who's the cowboy? Oh, this here, uh, this is J.D. He's a, a student. We're just giving him a ride to, to here and then he... For his supporting role as J.D., Brad Pitt was paid a salary of approximately $6,000 per week. While this might seem low considering the success of the film and Pitt's subsequent stardom, it's important to remember that actors often accept lower salaries for roles in independent or smaller budget films in exchange for the opportunity to work on interesting and potentially career-boosting projects. You know, I'm, I didn't know if he was like an actor if he wanted to wash my car for extra money. We had no idea Brad was going to be such an enormous star after that. Number six, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford's salary for his role as Han Solo in the original Star Wars film, Star Wars Episode IV New Hope, was relatively low by today's standards. For his work on the film, Ford earned a salary of around $10,000. And then they said $1,000 a week. And I said, no, <laughs> no. Uh, but I did. I did it for $1,000 a week. However, Star Wars became a massive cultural phenomenon and one of the highest grossing films of all time. As a result, Ford's salary increased significantly for his appearances in the later Star Wars films and other major projects. We can pay you 2,000 now, plus 15 
when we reach Alderaan. Okay, you guys got yourselves a ship. Number five, Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher, who played Princess Leia Organa in the original Star Wars trilogy, was also paid a relatively low salary for her iconic role in the first film. Carrie Fisher's salary for A New Hope was reported to be around $1,000 per week during the filming, which ended up amounting to $10,000 for the whole picture. Keep in mind that this was a low salary even for that era, especially considering the success and impact that Star Wars had. A little short for a stormtrooper? Huh? The film's tremendous success and the enduring popularity of Princess Leia led to Fisher renegotiating her contract for the subsequent films, earning a significantly higher salary for the 1980 The Empire Strikes Back and the 1983 Return of the Jedi. Well, you see, Lord Vader, she can be reasonable. Continue with the operation. You may fire when ready. What? Number four, Sean William Scott. Sean William Scott, known for his role as Steve Stifler in the American Pie film series, initially received a relatively low salary for the first American Pie film. For his role in American Pie, Sean William Scott received a salary of around $8,000. You only got 8,000 bucks? I think so. I think... Yeah, because I remember afterwards I bought a, a used Thunderbird for like five grand. <laughs> However, his performance as the crude and outrageous character Stifler became a standout in the film and contributed to the movie's success and cultural impact. The film's unexpected popularity led to several sequels, and Scott's salary increased significantly for his subsequent appearances in the franchise. Well, polish my nuts and serve me a milkshake. <laughs> Number 3. Jamie Lee Curtis Jamie Lee Curtis, despite being the lead actress in the original Halloween 1978 film, also received a relatively low salary for her role as Laurie Strode. She only earned a modest salary of $8,000. Nobody got paid anything. I think I got paid $8,000 for the whole movie. Despite the low compensation, Curtis's performance in the film received critical acclaim and she became known as the Scream Queen in the horror genre. Her association with the film franchise continued through several sequels and reboots, and she became a prominent figure in the horror genre and in Hollywood at large. Tommy! Tommy, it's me! Number 2. Hilary Swank Hilary Swank's salary for her role in the 1999 Boys Don't Cry was very low compared to the standard Hollywood pay scale. Swank played the role of Brandon Tina, a transgender man, which was based on a true story. I don't know what went wrong. You are not a boy. That is what went wrong. You are not a boy. She was so committed to the role that she reportedly accepted a salary of only $3,000 for her work. Swank's dedication to the character and her outstanding performance in the film earned her critical acclaim and a slew of awards, including the Academy Award for Best Actress. When I did too. Boys Don't Cry, mm -hmm. I was 24 years old. I made $3,000. You have to, in order to have health insurance, you have to make $5,000. Number one, Nick Castle. Nick Castle, who played the iconic character Michael Myers in the 1978 original Halloween film, received a very low salary for his role. He was paid a salary of just $25 per day. John Carpenter, the director of the film, enlisted Castle for the role because of his tall and imposing presence, as well as his ability to move gracefully and silently, which added to the eerie quality of the character. <laughs> Despite the low salary, Halloween became a groundbreaking and highly influential horror film and Michael Myers became one of the most iconic figures in the genre. The success of the film also helped boost the careers of both John Carpenter and Nick Castle. Although Castle continued to primarily work behind the camera as a director and writer in subsequent years. You can't kill the boogeyman. What other actors received relatively small sums for their parts? Let us know in the comments below. I get offered a movie, but the male, he got offered $10 million and I got offered 500000 What? Yeah. This is after two Academy Awards. Yes. What, what? are you talking about?